Hey everyone, it's Boy Nate Two here with a with video three of seven days, seven videos. And today's video uh, was a viewer request on by Gamer AMD eighty three, who requested that I talk about what is my idea for the perfect game. Firstly, I've got two things to say. One. This video may be up a bit later than usual. My internet is currently down at the moment. Um, uh, as soon as it's up, I will s upload this video. Um, I'll try and get another way to upload it, but this may be a little late, so I do apologise for that. And two, I love all of you. Um, I got an email from YouTube last night, just before my went down, that offered me revenue on my videos on this channel. So this channel has now been enabled for monetization, which if you don't know basically means I can put ads on my videos and earn a wee bit of money off this. So thank you all, I love you all, big fucking massive hugs and kisses and mwah. I love all of you. And as always I will keep making these videos so don't worry about that. And any money that goes any money I make after this channel and my second channel will go straight into making these videos even more entertaining. So thank you again, I love you all. So Let's get to the main topic of this video. My idea for a perfect game. Now this, the, the, the idea for the perfect game has been going around ever since the days of Pong. And everyone's idea of a perfect game is different. So this is what I look for in a game, but so f this is what I look for t in the perfect game. So after you've watched this video, let me know what your idea for a perfect game is. Now my idea for a perfect game is very, detailed unfortunately. I am very de I do like that. Um, the first thing what I do is I look for in a game is the story. I really like a game that has a gripping and engrossing story that makes me want to finish the game but also it gets me connected to the characters in the story. That's another thing. Stories and characters. I really do love a game that lets you get to know the characters in the game but also gets to know your character and also has an engrossing story that draws you in, that literally makes you want to finish the game, no matter how bad everything else is in it. The story must be gripping, engrossing, have a lot of twists and turns. You must be like, oh, what is going to happen next? It, it has to make me want to keep playing it and playing it over and over again until I finish the game. And even replaying it again to do something different to see what happens. That's what I look for first in the game. The game must have a really great story. And that's, well, I know I've probably said some that's what I liked about Mass Effect. Even though Mass Effect didn't have the best gameplay, uh, the best graphics, it's, the story was absolutely outstanding. That's why I kept playing Mass Effect. But that's what I look for first in the game. The game must have a good story. Uh, it can be single player or multiplayer, but I really prefer it if it just has a really great story. That draws me in and makes me want to play the game longer and longer and longer. And even makes me want to go back and play the game again. That's what I look for. When a game has a good enough story that makes you want to go back and play it, you know it's good. Ugh, excuse me. Um, but that's the first thing that I think you should look for, I look for in a game anyway for the perfect game, is the story. The second thing I look for is the characters. You could have the most amazing story in a game, but have the most bland characters ever. Um, case in point, my worst game ever, Two Worlds. The story had a lot of potential, but the characters were bland, boring, and it just made the story bland and boring. It had a lot of potential, but it was just bland and boring. So. Even even if you've got the idea for a brilliant story, if you have freaking horrible characters and they're just basically one-sided characters and have nothing to them, then your story is going to suffer, and that takes major points off for me. To so therefore the perfect game, your characters must be like your story. Have to be outstanding. Have to have something different about them. And I like it if you've got a large group of members and say your party or your team like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, stuff like that. I really do like it if there's a party involved and or t even a small team of four or something like that that you get to talk to the characters and you get to know them. Each character has their own personality. None of them are one-sided. All of them have different views 
maybe they're completely, maybe they're the exact same views as you, or maybe they're completely different. That's why I really look for in the game, you have to have really good characters as well as a story. If you don't have good characters, your story will suffer. And the story is the main part of the game that draws you to it. But if the characters suck, the story sucks. I'm sorry. So, the characters, you have to create them. You have to really understand and feel for these characters like they're real people. You have to actually become your character. The character you create in the game has to become you. And you talk to these other characters and you get to know them. You, you actually feel like you're talking to a real person sometimes. That's what really, in my opinion, makes a good as a perfect character. The character has to be different but it has to make you feel like you're talking to a real person. It isn't just like plain normal type of voice. It has to show the emotion in his voice. That's where it comes down to voice actor or voice actress. You have to have a good one for that character. That's just my opinion. The next thing that I look for in a perfect game is gameplay. The gameplay has to be acceptable. It has to be easy to use but rewarding if you experiment in my opinion. If you tweak things like use different combinations, use different types of guns, ammo, uh, different abilities, stuff like that. You, you have to have that in the gameplay. You have to have an experiment, experiment, experimentization with the gameplay. You have to tweak and muck about with it so that as you play the game and you master it, if you master the control scheme of any game, you can do anything with that game. And that's what I really like about some games. You have to be able to... Simple controls are normally the best. Like, A to jump, X to um, do something, right trigger to fire, A to attack, X to attack, Y to grapple, B to block, or something along those lines. Along those lines, I really do like that idea. It adds to the game, in my opinion. Sometimes the most simplest controls are the best. Because the simplest controls, like, example, Batman Arkham Asylum had the simplest fighting controls ever I've seen in a game. One button attacks, one button counters. That's it. You could also use batarangs if you wanted in the combo, but one button attacks, one button counters, and combination, and pressing A and X together does a special move, and B and Y throws opponents if they get a certain amount of combo. Though that was a simple control scheme, but it worked. And in my opinion, that is where a lot of games tend to shine. They take the simplest of gameplay and perfect it. They perfect they perfected the fighting gaming game style of Batman and Batman Arkham City Arkham Asylum. And I'm really looking forward to see what they've done with it in Arkham City. I've seen how they've evolved it. But, as I say, there's always room for improvement, but I'm a big fan of it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you can improve it, improve it. But so that's why I, I hate a lot of these like games that have fucking complex controls. Like, I, I've got Street Fighter over there. I do play everything, but I have not mastered any of the fucking special moves. And I know how to do the, the Hydoken and the Super Hydoken, and that's about it. I don't really like these games that have fucking complex control, like I press left, right, down, right, up, A, X, hold A and X at the same time, press left bumper, right trigger, take out the disc, put in another disc, put in the Xbox, get a PS3 control, use your feet to press X, A, R, B, and start! Done! I don't like those type of games in my opinion. They're, they're, some people love those games, some people like the complexity of them. I personally don't. I do like a game that has a, co that has a simple control scheme, but you can experiment with it and find the more complex stuff, but at your own pace. You don't have to know them like that. Oh, excuse me. That's why I like about the gameplay. It also has to be very... The enemies in, this, in the game as well have to be challenging, but not impossible to beat. You can't, like... I know I've heard of this game called Demon Souls. That game, from what I've seen, is meant to be played hard. And in my opinion, if I played that game for like an hour, and like you get killed on the first boss, that's a shit fucking game. In my honest opinion. I understand it has a massive cult following, but a, a game that intentionally wants to get you killed. I would literally throw that game out of the, out of the room. I would literally throw it 
take a sledgehammer and smash it to pieces. I, a game has to follow a simple rules of gameplay. At the start of the game, it's it's not too depending on your difficulty, like hard, easy, normal, hard, insanity, whatever, whatever it one goes. The start of the game is where you learn the moves, and it should be fairly easy. Not too easy that it's like okay, just walk through this door, press A, press right trigger to fire, stuff like that. But a challenging enough that it isn't too easy, but isn't impossible to beat either. And that's why, like, that's why I think with the gameplay is really important. You need to the start of the game needs to be easy, easy ish, depending on your difficulty setting. The rest of the game is completely up to you. And that's why I think a lot of game. A lot of these games tend to forget is that your gameplay has to represent what your game is. Um, you have to make the co controls simple enough for someone who's not going to become a master at this game, easy enough for someone to pick it up, play it, and complete it, but in depth enough and more advanced enough that if you put the time and effort into the game, you can master it and do things that you'd never thought you could do in that game. <clears throat> Which is going to be better. And that's my opinion on the gameplay. That's what really needs to be done for a perfect game. The, the gameplay needs to be simple, but challenging. And if you put the time and effort into the game, you have you 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 feel accomplished when you're doing. You're literally like, yes, I finally pulled that fucking move out. Hallelujah! <laughs> I finally beat that boss and all that stuff. That's what, in my opinion, makes a really good game play. Um. Now let's move on to the next thing. This is mainly a cosmetic thing, the graphics. Now, a lot of people can say the game doesn't have to have good graphics to be a perfect game. In my opinion, it kind of does. Fair enough, like 10, 20 years ago when we were playing Mario, Pac-Man, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle games, things like that. But, we're in the, we're in the 21st century, the, the goal, the, the advanced, the, the most advanced age of gaming we've had so far. And it's still advancing. In my opinion, if you want to create a perfect game, the graphics have to literally make my jaw drop. I have to look at. I have to want to just sit there and look at the amount of detail they put into the game. Uh, one game in particular, Batman Arkham City, the amount of detail that is in that game. They even give you a zoom feature to see the amount of detail in some in Joker's face and the trees and the buildings. And Batman Arkham Asylum has the most amazing graphics in a game I've seen in years. Mass Effect 2, when I first stuck on Mass Effect 2 and I landed on some of these colonist planets, even, see when I landed on Ilium, my jaw went, oh, oh my god. Absolutely beautiful. The game has to make me go like that. And... That is what I look for in graphics. The graphics have to be beautiful, outstanding, but also have to create atmosphere as well. I'll get to the. I'll, I'll say that a wee bit more when I get to the music. But the game, the the graphics have to literally want me to stare at the scenery for hours. It's like you're watching a beautiful sunset. You could sit there and look at the graphics and just look at the buildings, the people, the amount of detail in the graphics, and literally go, wow. Like that. They have to make me go like that before to make a perfect game with graphics. Um, now, the next thing is probably a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't really matter, you can just put random thing in. But I personally like a game with its own music. That's why I love Bioware. Because of the music as well as the games. Bioware, in my opinion, have came the closest to creating my perfect game. And if, if I'm being perfectly honest, especially with the music. The music in some games is absolutely outstanding. And combined with everything else in the game, literally makes you want to listen to that soundtrack. Every time you hear that sound, like um, Liliana's song from Dragon Age Origins, whenever I hear that, I always picture that scene in my head. I always see Liliana walk into the fire, her voice echoing, and all that, I always hear that. Every time I hear that, I always end up seeing that scene. And same with Mass Effect. When I hear certain 
massive big soundtracks and all that, I picture the mission that I was on with that soundtrack. I, li I literally see it in my mind. And when a music, when music can do that in a game, it's perfect. It can do that. When it does that, the music creates the atmosphere and makes you remember every little detail of the place where the music was played. That's what makes perfect music for a perfect game. Now, after all this, after all I've said and all that, it seems like, oh, you've probably played your perfect game. I can actually tell you right now, I've still not played my perfect game. Even though Bioware have came this close to creating my perfect game, I still have yet to play my perfect game. I, am, I have high hopes for Mass Effect 3 to be my perfect game, but I won't judge it until I've played it. Oh, excuse me. And for my perfect game, I, I've told you what it is. It has to have a great story, great character, has to have amazing story, great characters, great gameplay, great graphics, and outstanding music. If I had to pick the majority, the ones that are most important in creating a game, story, characters, music. I'll always say, well, about graphics and gameplay. If those three things are met, that game is good. Fair enough, I would also like graphics as well, but in my opinion, I think the music is a little bit more important than the, than the graphics, I'm going to be honest. Because think back to all these games you remember from playing as a child, like Pac-Man. You don't really remember the... You remember, it's the simplest of simplest games, but you remember the tune. Did it? I, no, I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah, everyone remembers the Pac-Man tune, or the Tetris theme, or the Super Mario theme. When a, when, when, a, when a game makes a music when it makes some music like that that you remember even gone into yourself do 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 so um overall to make my perfect game the things I find most important are game or story characters and music because as I say as we better go the music tends to if the music can remind you of the game when you hear it once then you know it's a good game. Uh, so let me know down below what your perfect game is and don't just like say oh I'm the exact same as you, go into a little bit of detail, tell me exactly what makes your perfect game. Uh, so overall uh, yeah that's my idea for a perfect game and we'll wait and see uh, if Bioware can actually create, if any game company could actually make my perfect game. So as always, I'm Scottish Warrior 92 If you agree with what I've said about the perfect game, don't forget to click that thumbs up button. If you don't, click the dislike button. As always, don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, to click the subscribe button above my head. As always.